Psalms 9, 1, 1, verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And 9, 1, 1 speaks volumes, especially for the generation that we are. 9, 1, 1. It speaks volumes to Americans. And by the way, their helpline is not 999, like ours. Yes, it's 911. So God is sending a message for modern people. So let me know the, the Bible is practical. The Bible is advanced. God knows what's going to happen before it happens. God wants us to learn from Him so that we lay aside making a God out of our reason and our heads. You see, if you say, well, Pastor Prince, you take the Bible as sole authority. I, I believe the Bible is full of flaws. You see, I believe you're making your mind your Bible. You're making your reason your sole authority. Everybody has a sole authority. They say they don't believe in anyone. They believe in themselves. They believe in their reason. They believe in their logic. They have deified their heads. Man who's whose breath is in his nostrils, boasts above holy scripture that cannot be broken. As for me and my house, the word of God is final authority. Amen. And church, let's all stand to our feet right now. You all know that God is confirming word of signs and wonders. You all know that we released the Solid Rock magazine, our church magazine, with the theme of Psalms 91 in the center. We even had a card for all of you of Psalms 91, not knowing what's going to happen this week. And I already planned to preach on Psalms 91. So you all know that God is in the house. God who knows the future. God does not want your hearts to be troubled. doesn't want you to be in fear. The Jewish rabbis, I learned this from John G. Lake, a great man of God, who said that the Jewish rabbis, he said these words, the Jewish rabbis teach that if one will quote Psalms 91, seven times. Faith will be in their hearts. Jewish rabbis recommend people who are sick to re recite Psalms 91 again and again and again. The Jewish rabbis tell us, if you look at the Hebrew letters, they're always like crowns on top, little ticks, little crowns, they call it. You don't see it in our English Bible, but in the Hebrew, there's crowns. Of all the Psalms, in the book of Psalms. Psalms 91 has the most Zion. What is Zion? Zion is a picture of the sword. It's a mark of a sword in all the letters in Psalm 91. So the Jewish rabbi says, it's a sword to cut the powers of darkness away from your life. And they do not know about, when they shed this, they live in hundreds of years ago, they never knew that the world is becoming increasingly an evil place, getting dark, amen where I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, however I want to do it. You don't tell me what to do, when I want to do it, wherever I want to do it, however I want to do it. So, we are living in that world today where I, me, and mine is the most important thing. And God, God says, you see, I don't care how you raise your family. As for me and my house, we're going to raise the family in the way of the Lord. Amen. Like Joshua says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Can I have a good amen? So we are in perilous times. We are in days where men are lovers of themselves. But I'd like for all of you right now together in one voice, one heart, wherever you're watching this, let's quote Psalms 91. And I'm believing God, God will release an anointing, a covering, a pavilion, covering you and your loved ones in your families. Amen. For the days to come. We'll step into the days to come. Like Jesus prayed in John 17. He prayed to the Father in His high priestly prayer the night that He was betrayed and delivered to the hands of the Romans. He prayed this prayer, Father, I pray not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil in the world. Amen. So that prayer is answered for sure. Let's line ourselves with that prayer. Are you ready? All together now, one heart, one voice, read. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day not of the pestilence that walks in darkness, not of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. 
A thousand may fall at your sight, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall tremble underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Long life, my salvation. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You may be seated. What a beautiful psalm. What a powerful psalm. Do you feel that? I'm telling you, that this place is charged. That place that's watching right now, that place is charged. You can sense it. It's almost a tangible, palpable anointing. Hallelujah. Psalms 91 is a psalm that God gave for times that we are in. It covers all kinds of evil in the world. If you look at uh, verse 3, verse 3 tells us, Surely he shall deliver you, deliver you from the snare of the fowler. You know, the so fowler, a bird trap. The devil traps people. He does not come and say, look, I'm the devil. Okay? He will tell you there's nothing wrong with playing with and looking up your, your star in the horoscope. There's nothing wrong with playing Ouija board. There's nothing wrong with doing this kind of thing. There's nothing wrong watching this horror movie, okay? Verse 5 and 6, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Now, why should anyone be afraid of an arrow that flies by day? Is God just referring to a piece of stick with feathers in the end? No, God is referring to missiles in the last days. There's cause for concern and worry. And uh, now we have missiles that can hit all the way up to 30, more than 30,000. And we need not be afraid because the Bible says God promises He will protect us. Amen. Amen. So let's see the category. We have the terror. And what a world we live in. It's a world of terror now. Imagine our children living in a world that for us, we can walk down the street, we can actually go to an airport in times past and not have to worry about, about so many things and even take off our shoes. And now, all kinds of things. The, the latest one is even you got to prove that your iPhone is really working or your computer is working. All right? So, the terror of the times we live in, the arrow, the missile that flies, the pestilence are diseases that walks in darkness. You know, people are afraid of, uh, they, they, they read things like uh, a guy exercises every day, he runs every day. All of a sudden, they found out he has a disease that's been walking in darkness in his body. No one detected it, he, he dropped dead. Whatever they say, is genetics or whatever it is, God says there's protection from it. Amen. All right, this is Holy Scripture. And then we have the destruction that, that is uh, uh, generic. It covers everything. The destruction that wasted at noonday. So all the categories of evil you can imagine that can come upon a world that cause people to be afraid are all covered in Psalms 91. And uh, for which times? Is it seasonal? Is it at certain times? No. Verse 5 says, By night... By day. Verse 6, darkness and noonday. In other words, 24-hour protection. Are you listening, people? 24-hour protection. Now, first and foremost, you must establish this. There are people who don't believe that, that uh, God is not running the world completely. I'm telling you, church, God is running His people, His kingdom, and His people that are in the kingdom but if the people in the kingdom are not willing to follow him, okay, they are still on their own. God is not running this world. If God is running this world, there'll be no hospitals. If God is running this world, there'll be no need for missiles and weapons. If God is running this world. Once upon a time, God was running this world. There was no disease, there was no sickness, there was no poverty. There was no death in the Garden of Eden. And then man sinned. God, the Bible says, the earth has God given to the children of man. And God is not the kind of giver like man is. After you give, you say, give it, give it back to me. No, when God gives, it is given. 
He was a man that committed high treason, bowed his knee to an outlaw spirit, Satan, and gave the earth, in a sense, to Satan, all right? But it must be a man that will take it back from him. So the second Adam came. His name is Jesus Christ. And he got it back for us. Hallelujah. Amen. He conquered death, the ultimate enemy, and rose from the dead bodily. And he's alive today. You and I serve a risen Savior. Amen. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com. that God had the whole world destroyed? Why did God bring the flood, the deluge, upon this entire world? After hundreds and hundreds of years, all the world were, were men who were actually, they are men still, but they are perverted men. Half angels, half human. And their thoughts are evil continually. Noah was the only family, pure human race. They are the only hope left. And God saved them all in the ark. God protects His people. God says, Noah, a flood is coming. I'm going to destroy all the earth. Build an ark. What is that? Mercy on His people. The ark suffered the divine, the, 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 the ferocious divine anger against all lawlessness. And the wickedness that His fallen angels have brought about on man and man's wickedness in yielding to them. The ferociousness and the divine fierceness of God's anger hit the ark. But not one wave of judgment reached Noah. Why did God save Noah and his uh, family? Because they are the only ones who are fully human left. After hundreds and hundreds of years, the eruption was almost complete. And God had to send the flood, listen carefully, because of His grace and His mercy. So that God can preserve the human race. And God can bring forth the faithfulness of His Word. That the Messiah will come and crush Satan's head. He who has oppressed and bullied mankind. Jesus will come and crush him. This time round, when you see a rainbow, remember this. Believers, it's only for believers. God promised. And God doesn't have to promise. Man promise, I know, but God doesn't have to. But it's as if to strengthen our faith. He says, I swear, I will never again be angry with you. And I'll never condemn you. <laughs> 